Today on the audio hotline, I'm going to be doing a review of the YOLO Live YOLO Box Pro. This device is slightly different than what I usually do. However, for content creators like myself and for people that have podcasts like myself or YouTube channels, a device like this can be a very nice addition. One of the many things that I plan on using it for is more live streams on this channel, but also doing long form podcasts with the podcast Bark and I from Obscure Mics have. The Obscure Hotline is the name of the podcast. A device like this makes going live a lot easier. And it also gives you way more functionality than a lot of other devices out there. So since the Yolo Box Pro is a device that I'm going to be using a lot in correlation with this channel, I figured it would be a cool thing to talk about. Now, of course, the disclaimer. Yolo Live did in fact send me the Yolo Box Pro. However, this device is something that I have been thinking about buying myself for a very long time. But I'm allowed to say whatever I think about this device. There's no sponsorship here or anything. I'm just going to be giving the Yolo Box Pro a honest review. One thing that I have thought about that I'm not entirely sure of is I know that Yolo stands for you only live once. A really dumb saying that's kind of outdated now. <laughs> At least I still hope people don't say it. But I guess I would assume that Yolo in this instance stands for you're only live once. Maybe? I don't know. I mean, I guess with it being Yolo live. You're only live once live. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, that's bad. I know there are a lot of channels out there that have done run throughs and done reviews of the YOLO Box Pro, but in this particular review, I'm going to go over the whole unit and everything, but I'm also really curious how good of audio this really can capture. Sadly, a really small device like this doesn't give you the option of having an XLR connection. In fact, it just has a mic and a line in that are 3.5 millimeter. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing. I'll show you some workarounds that you could potentially use to get better audio into this. So today we will be talking about the specs, the features, what it's capable of doing. I will also do some comparisons of the video quality internally in the Yolo Box Pro. I will also do an audio test where I test the internal recording versus an external external recording device. I'll do quite a few tests and comparisons and just see what kind of quality you can get with the Yolo Box Pro. And then together we can figure out if this is going to work for you and work for me. But if you are here looking for some specific information, there are timestamps down below and you can just navigate through this whole thing. But let's go ahead and lace our boots up and just stomp right through these features. I don't know what that means, but I'm going with it. When it comes to physical features of the Yellow Box Pro, the first thing you'll notice is the 8-inch touchscreen display. On the bottom right side of this device, you will see the power button that does have a gold little ring around it. Next to that, you will see an option where you can insert a SIM card. And the Yellow Box Pro does come with a little SIM card key ejector thing. This is a nano SIM slot. It can do 4G LTE. Next to that, you will see an SD card slot. Currently, I have a 200 156 gigabyte SanDisk card that's working great. And next to that is where the quarter inch mount is. And the Yolo Box Pro does in fact come with a monitor mount. On the back side of the Yolo Box Pro, there isn't a whole lot of information or anything, but there is a cool texture. Now on the top of the Yolo Box Pro on the left side, you will see three HDMI ins. These support 1080p up to 60 frames per second. Next to that, you will see a USB plug. Right here is where you could plug in a webcam and even potentially a capture card. I'm gonna test that out here soon. In the middle, you will see an ethernet plug. Next to that, there is an HDMI out. Then there is a type C plug. Recently, I used a USB-C to USB-C cable going into a Samsung T5 and it worked flawlessly. I was able to record directly onto it through that type C port. Next to that, you will see a headphone jack so you can monitor your audio. And that is a 3.5 millimeter jack. And next to that, there are two more 3.5 millimeter jacks, one for a mic and one for a line in. And last but of course not least, there is a USB-C plug where you can charge this device. And yes, this device does work on a charge. You do not always have to have it plugged in. Now, when it comes to the physical features of the Yolo Box Pro, I'm a big fan. I think this is a very, very capable device. And quite honestly, the fact that it has an ethernet plug is so cool. And the fact that it has a SIM card area is also amazing. And I mean, even the fact that you don't need a SIM card or an ethernet plug and you can use Wi-Fi, you'll absolutely get better results from the other options. But the fact that Wi-Fi is still available is awesome. I will say I'm very happy it does have an SD card that you can record to, but I think I'm even more excited about that USB-C port and that you could record out to an SSD. 
But the fact that this has three HDMI ends is amazing. And I do think another really cool feature is actually that USB plug. So you could plug your webcam straight into here. And one thing I actually am going to test later is using a capture card for that USB, just like a cheap $20 one, and just see if we can get, you know, a fourth HDMI in. But quite honestly, the physical features of this is everything that I need. Now that we've gone through the physical features, let's jump into this operating system. Let's see all the software features and capabilities it has. Now I'm going to run through the software with you really quick. I'm going to show you every setting that there is, but I'm not going to dive into each individual thing, but you will have a good understanding of what this device is capable of. And during this section, we will be kind of testing out the features. I do have three cameras set up right now. I got my main camera angle, my second camera angle, then I got a third camera angle up here. But let's just go ahead and start right at the beginning at the home screen. When you first open this, it won't have this little live option. It'll just be blank. But in order to start a live stream, you can just go to this plus button. Here you can choose to start a live stream or go into monitor mode. We're not going to really go into monitor mode. Monitor mode is basically live stream mode, but you don't have the option to invite people, go live, or to see comments, obviously. But if you do just want to record your videos to the Yolo Box Pro, Monitor mode is a great option. But before I show you how to create a live stream, we'll go through the settings on here. And you might actually be asking yourself, hey, how do you have a mouse plugged in and how am I seeing a cursor right now? So actually the USB type C port on this device is really awesome. Currently I have a USB hub plugged into it and I'm using a keyboard and mouse and it works flawlessly. But up here you can see your data rates, the time, whether you're connected to Wi-Fi, your battery percentage. If you actually drag down from the top of the screen, it will give you the brightness option that you can go in and adjust that. And then under here are your settings. This is where you can go in and set up your accounts, whether you want to live stream to Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, or just type in an RTMP. Also, I do believe you have to create an account with YOLO Live when you first get this. I did that. That's the account right here. You can go into your network settings. You can actually do a network test. And you can set up your Wi-Fi and Ethernet here. And this is also the place you can go to upgrade your firmware. Your language, your time zone, you can go into recordings and see what's on your SD card. You can go here for help, system updates, factory resets, screen rotations, diagnostic logs. So if it's your first time opening your YOLO Box Pro, definitely go in here and set some stuff up. Now for most people who want to do a live stream or go into monitor mode, you'd press this plus and choose what you want to do. However, I have set up a previous live stream on here, and one thing that is really nice is if you have set it up and you've gotten the settings exactly the way you want, instead of going to this three little dot thing and deleting it, you can actually duplicate it, and then it will create a current live stream, but with all the same settings. So for me, the easiest thing would be to duplicate this. I'll get the same settings. Then I can type in here with my super clicky keyboard, create a little live stream test. The description is optional. You can type in whatever you want. You can set up date if you want to, don't have to, We'll just go ahead and create it. And then once you create it, it will say open and resume or end it up here for the older ones. And then you can just click on that and it will take you right in. There I am. You see me now. The first thing this shows you are the platforms that you've set up in your settings. And then you can just choose if you want to do a multi-platform setting. There is a setting you do need to change to do that. But you can go ahead and click whatever one you want to go live on. I could do Audio Hotline. That's this channel or the podcast that I do with Bark from Obscure Mics. This is the Obscure Hotline right here. Or I can go ahead and link a Twitch or an RTMP. But before we get into these other tabs, let's go ahead and go over to this left side and I'll talk about that a little bit. This arrow is if you actually wanted to exit the live stream right now, which we do not want to do. We don't want that. Then you see 1080p. You can change your settings right right here of your video quality. The replay option we'll get into a little bit later, but here is where you can start recording. And like I said before, you can record to an SD card or you can plug an SSD into the USB-C jack on here. But then you of course have your go live option, which I'm not going to do right now, but then you also have a full screen option. So we can make this full screen right here. And you still actually do have some setting options down below when you do go into full screen mode, which is great. But here is where you can switch between your HDMI sources. Like I showed you before, you just click on it once but right here you can click and add a different video source whether it's a local video from an SD card a live stream or even a PDF then you have your multi view options whether that's a picture in picture a split view side by side or even a triple layout with three different videos now for instance one thing I could do is do a split view and I could just show you my main camera option and then I can select the overhead view also. Then you can go in here and change where you want the separator to be, the border thickness, the color, just a lot of cool stuff. But then once you get that all set up the way you want, you can just go ahead and press done. 
and then it will show up as another video source that you can actually just switch between. Now one thing that some people do like to do is chroma keying, whether they're using a green or blue screen. So if I wanted to do that, I could just click on my main HDMI, click up on the right corner of the video, go to chroma keying, press good to go. I mean, I don't have a green screen behind me and this probably isn't gonna work well, but we'll give it a shot. I'll go blue, hey! It did show up a little bit, but then here you can change the smoothness, the similarity and everything. And this is also where you can add the picture that you want to use if you do have it on your SD card or you have a USB storage plugged in. But I actually don't really mess with green screen or blue screen at all. And you can tell it doesn't look great. <laughs> But one thing that is cool is if I want to go back to picture in picture mode, I can select my HDMIs, can get that border thickness out of here, scale me up, and I could actually be in the corner here, like talking, instructing, and everything, and I could have like my computer screen showing or whatever. So this is the way you could do that if I actually had a green screen right now and it looked better. This does actually work really well. I'm not doing a great example of showing you how well it works, but it does work well. Or you can go ahead and swap the video, which that looks so bad. <laughs> Another option you do have in the video source edit is cropping. So here is where you could do a 9x16 crop or 16x9 or even do a custom crop. So for this, what I'm going to do just as a quick example is just do a little bit of like a zoom. Then I want to fit it to screen. So that way it fills the whole screen once I actually do select it. Then I can just save it as a new source. And then right down here, you can see that it showed up as HDMI 1 slash 1. So if I was just talking to you and I wanted to get really serious, and I was like, hey guys, like, this is serious. And I could just punch in like that and be like, hey, serious talk, blah, blah, blah. Then be like, you know, not serious anymore. Let's have fun. It gives you a lot of options. Even if you just have one camera on, you could, you know, crop a few different ways and give people different options, different ways of seeing you. So when it comes to those video source edits, there are a lot of different options that you can do, and then you can create split views like this, or picture in picture, like I showed you before. But now let's go over to the right side of the screen, and I'll just run through these different settings here. The first option you see with the platforms actually isn't the farthest to the left, which is a little weird to me, but whatever. The farthest one to the left is actually overlays. And this is actually where you can import different images or create things on the actual Yolo Box Pro system, whether it's a lower third, a countdown timer, a URL title, social overlay, or the image overlays like I said before where you can import your own things. You can import it from an SD card or the USB storage option which you can use the USB-C for that. So for the podcast that I do with Bark from Obscure Mics, I'll put our logos on the screen and then our little, you know, YouTube names on there. And then I'll actually split the view kind of like I did before but in the middle. And then we'll just have our little long form podcast. It's really easy to do on here, easy to make it look pretty solid. But another really cool thing is they do have like a starting soon timer that you can actually go in and customize if you want. You can go in and name these overlays. You can add the background music for this starting soon timer. You can even change the text and just be like, AH audio hotline live in 10 minutes. You can change the font on these overlays to some weird ones. Look at that one. Jeez. But it is pretty customizable. You can go in and change the font color. You can do whatever you want to do. And of course you can change the transparency or you can have it not be transparent at all. You can scale it up, scale it down. But as far as overlays, they do have quite a few options on here that you can just edit yourself. Here are some lower third options. Here are some title options that they give you. Here are the social overlay options they have for you. But one of the things that I'm a big fan of is the auto hide feature that they have on here. So for instance, if I were to go into this little gross looking thing that I made and I were to click and hold and then press edit on the far left corner, you could see that I could scroll down and hit the auto hide feature. So if this is on, this will basically mean that you get to choose the duration of how long you want this to show up. So if I were to be like, hey, everyone that's an audio hotline member, I really appreciate you. I think that you have the nicest butts I've ever seen on the planet. They seriously are just amazing. If I wanted to do that and then have it auto hide, I could do that. So that was a little bit more time than I probably wanted to spend on overlays, but overlays are fun. So next to that's the platforms. We talked about that, but then after that, you can invite guests. So here you can just press invite guests and you can actually invite up to five, which is absolutely fantastic. The invite guest option on here was a very big selling point. If this device did not have that, I wouldn't have been interested in it at all. But I'm going to go ahead and type in my email address and then I will join my own live stream. It's going to be so cool. 
So here I will just go to the email that it just sent me and I will accept the invite. But then as a guest, you can just go in and type in your name and then press join. But then on the Yolo Box Pro, I can actually just go and select theirs as a video source. So if I did want to do a split view or something, I could go and choose their video source and then my main video source. And there you go. Then you have both versions of me right now. So inviting people to your live stream is really easy for them and you. Next, we have sound settings, which is very important. I would argue it's the most important part of a live stream. When you click on the audio settings, there's this little setting up here on the right. This shows you your audio gain cap. It comes default at 10. You can go to 20 or 30. Personally, I went to 30 as my cap just because I think it's nice to have a little bit more room to work with if needed. Up top, you have your program audio, which is basically just your master. Next is your monitor control, which if you are going to plug in headphones into the Yellow Box Pro, that's where you can and go and adjust that level. Then next you have an HDMI option for every camera that's plugged in. And then at the very bottom is the line in. And that's actually what I'm using right now. The Zoom H5 has a line out option, so I'm just using a 3.5 millimeter cable to go into the line in option on the Yellow Box Pro. And then using the blue Sona to go into the Zoom H5. But I do have another microphone set up here going into my HDMI 3. So I'm gonna mute this microphone and then turn on the HDMI 3 audio. So now you are listening to the Deity D4 and you can tell up in the left corner, you can still see my audio jumping up and down, which is good. So it is getting this HDMI signal. Now I'm back to the line in option and it is actually really nice that it does have a delay. I usually have to set this to about 30 milliseconds to 40 milliseconds. But then if I were to mute my line in and go to my HDMI 2, Here's the sound of that. And that's actually the Canon camera that I have plugged in that's kind of across the room. So it probably sounds like garbage. And here's my HDMI one. I do have like a little Rode mic plugged in. It's not gonna sound amazing, but it definitely would sound better than the, you know, internal Canon audio. This is the Sony a7 IV. And actually I did want to test out if the Yellow Box Pro was compatible really well with other cameras. I haven't had a single issue. I have a Sony plugged in right here, a Canon plugged in right here. Then I actually have another Sony right here, but I also have used the Lumix S5 and it works great. But one additional thing I want to mention really quick is this. The USB-C port on here is great. Like I said earlier, it is using a mouse and a keyboard right now. But actually I tried plugging in my Focusrite Scarlett into the USB-C just out of curiosity to see what would happen. And I'm gonna show you what happens. So it absolutely powers the device, totally works that way. But in sound settings, when I plugged in a Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, you'll see this. At the very bottom, it says USB audio. And then if you go to turn it on, it says, sorry, audio mixing is not supported for USB-A type C ports currently. Now let me emphasize that one more time by zooming in. Currently. That makes me think that they're going to be adding it soon. And honestly, that would be so sick. This device would literally have everything that I wanted if it could do that. Like straight up. I can't wait. I really hope it happens. But then after sound settings, you will see a little scoreboard option. So here you can have team one and two. You can see that I did add the little audio hotline logo and the obscure mics logo. They don't look amazing there. I think they're supposed to be like 95 by 95 pixels and they were way bigger than that. But you can go in, change the team names, and then you can, you know, add points as they score or whatever you want to do. But there's a scoreboard in case you want it. To the right of the scoreboard option is your comment section, and that's where people's comments will pop up while you're live streaming. Pretty simple. And then next to that is the auto switch option. If you want the Yellow Box Pro to auto switch between your devices, this is where you can do that. First, you just go and select what HDMI sources you want it to auto switch between. Then you just press done. And then on HDMI one, if I wanted my main camera, this one to play for like two minutes and then switch to the further one, I could do that. And then down here, you can choose whether you want them to loop then also the option for it to be sequential or random. Then down there is the option to show your main video source, which you can like leave it there longer if you want. But just for this quick example, I've just set them all to five seconds. So here in two seconds, it's gonna switch to this one over here. There you go. And uh, now it's gonna be here for a couple more seconds and then you know right there. And there we go. 
It's the auto switch. And the last category is the settings. Now there are a decent amount here, so I'm just gonna try to briefly go through them as fast as I can. First is the video source switching mode, which is whether you wanna tap on an HDMI one time or two times for it to switch. Then below that is the local video switching settings. So you can just look at those really quick if you are interested. Then under that you have your local videos play mode, whether they loop or stop at last frame. I would assume if I was to play a video from like my SD card or import one, I would want it to stop at the last frame rather than loop. So I'm just gonna press that. Then you have SD card management, which is fantastic. You can go in and select these recordings, delete them, delete individual ones or whatever you want. And also you can see how much storage you have. Then next to that is the program out. If I were to select this right now, it would basically send a clean HDMI to the Atomos Ninja, since that is in my HDMI out port right now. So right now it'll just switch to my main angle rather than showing all the information as you can see right now. Then once I deselect program out, it'll show you all the other stuff. Then next is USB-C out. You can see down here it says, please add three HDMI sources for best experience when directly outputting to the computer. So then you have your video source transitions. Currently, I'm a fan of just the cut. So instead of it doing just like some transition, you know, it's just like, cut. But personally, if I were to do a different transition, it would be the fade option at like a half a second. I think that's fine. So if I were to, you know, switch to this one, it'd just be a quick little fade, you know, quick little fadesies to the other one. But they have a ton of options. You can, you know, wipe. You can wipe your butt or something. There you go. And directional wipe, which is diagonal, I'm assuming. There you go. Nailed it. And then translation. There you go, friendo. They have a lot of options, though. So window slice. Let's get window sliced, okay? Simple zoom. That was complex, not very simple. But anyway, cross zoom. Star Wars. <laughs> and then squeeze. I feel like squeeze is going to be funny. I think I'm going to like squeeze. Yep, there you go. I like squeeze. That was fun. I had a fun with that one. Flip page. I feel like I haven't messed with this, but like I feel like I want to bump up the duration on this because I feel like it would be funny. Let's flip the page. Let's flip the script. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, cube, dude. Cube. I'm leaving long duration on this one. Cube it. Let's get, uh, let's get an ice cube. Come on. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no hate. Some people might like that. It's fine. It's fine. I'm good with it. But uh, for me, I'll probably just stick with the simple cut and uh, be good with it. And also, if you were to like be finishing your show, you can be like, hey, I'll see you guys later. And then it'll fade to black. There you go. There's another option. Then under that, you just have the streaming mode, whether you want to go to multiple platforms or just a single platform. Then you have your video output options. You have your encoding settings, which are important. These are different encoding options, but also bit rate. I would recommend recording and testing out some live streams with different bit rates and seeing what the best results are that you can get as far as video quality goes. Then under that, you do have frames per second. So you can go down to 20 and up to 60. Underneath that, you have your recording limits. So basically the video is going to be recorded and saved every 10 minutes up to just 60 or continuous. They recommend a shorter time so you're not losing a bunch of video if there are any interruptions. Storage settings, you can choose between SD and USB. And then the last setting is actually replay settings, which I don't know if a ton of people would use this or not, but I'll just test it out for you really quick. But here are the options associated with that. So if I were to start recording, it gives me a little indication of how much space I have left and also lets me know that it needs to start a new clip every 3.5 gigabytes due to system restrictions. So I'll just press start recording. So if here in a few seconds I just started, you know, acting like a complete maniac and like throwing my hands around, doing weird stuff, then I could just go ahead and replay that. It'll replay the last five seconds. And there you go. I'm being insane. So there it is. That's how you do a replay. And then if I were to stop recording that right now, I can press done. But it'll say down here your recording is being saved. Do not eject your USB or SD until it says recording saved successfully. But as far as the OS goes in live stream mode, that's pretty much it. But that was my pretty lengthy, relatively thorough walkthrough of the software and some of the features. If you have any additional questions that I did not get to, just leave them down below and I'll definitely answer them. Now for me, the software is completely customizable enough that I'm very happy with it. I definitely love the option of being able to go in and easily customize the video quality and the bitrate. The fact that you can just put whatever graphics you want on your SD card and easily import them 
That's amazing. Now I know I didn't get insanely specific with absolutely every single software feature, but I mostly just wanted to go through what this is in fact capable of. But let's get into the stuff that's most important to me. Let's see the quality that this can capture and send out in a live format. Let's check out the audio and video quality to this. Right now I'm just doing a real quick live stream test from my iPhone mobile hotspot. This is with the Yolo Box Pro. I'm just literally sitting in my car in my garage. You can see I have an orange extension cord right there. Such a pretty scene, so beautiful. I'm sure the lighting is just gonna be atrocious and this video is probably gonna be pretty noisy. Not like audio noisy, but video noisy, you know? But currently I'm just using the Saramonic VMic 5 Pro, but I'm just grabbing it straight from the HDMI signal so the microphone is just going directly into my camera. One thing I do wanna clarify before I get to the other tests in this video is that I wanted to let you know that I actually was able to get some audio interfaces to work with this device. And in some of these tests that are coming up, I actually did use it. The one in particular that I was able to use was the Zoom AMS24. I was able to put that in streaming mode and it worked flawlessly. But I did just wanna let you know that I was actually able to get some audio interfaces to work. I'll explain a little bit more in the review section of this video. Oh no, I lost light again. We'll just go with it, whatever. But just so you know, it is a possibility to get really solid audio into this device. But this has basically been a live stream vlog test. So is it possible? Yes, it does seem like I am dropping some frames, but it is somewhat doable. But I really just did wanna give you an example of how you can pretty much live stream wherever you want. But you can check out the footage, you can judge it for yourself, and here are the much better looking tests coming Coming up here in a second. Right now I'm doing a little live stream test going to the audio hotline but just as an unlisted video. I just wanted to double check the quality of it going live and everything versus the internal recording. So I'll flip back and forth between that really quick. Here's the live stream video and here is the internal recording in the Yolo Box Pro, not in the camera. But currently I'm actually recording this audio in the USB-C jack using the Zoom AMS24. And the camera that I have plugged in is actually the Lumix S5. So I've officially used a bunch of different kinds of cameras and everything. Everything seems very compatible. I don't have like the fastest internet of all time and I actually am doing this with Wi-Fi, not Ethernet, because that was another thing that I wanted to test to see if it could keep up. So up top on the Yolo Box Pro, it'll actually tell you if you've dropped any frames or anything like that. And I have dropped zero frames, 0% 0 has been dropped. I've got green lights. I'm actually recording at the exact same time also, which is amazing. I did previously do one other live test that looked solid and everything. So I'm actually feeling really good about it. The only other thing that I did want to mention right now is if you do get one of these cheap little USB-A capture cards. I believe I got a couple of these one time for like 20 bucks on Amazon, maybe even a little less. Currently, an identical version of this one is actually recording me right now into the USB-A port on the Yolo Box Pro. So you actually can use a capture card to add a fourth HDMI into the Yolo Box Pro. So if you wanna spend 20 to $100, depending on the quality of capture card that you want to get, you can add a fourth HDMI, much like the Blackmagic ATEM Mini Pro that I use. So here's the quick live test, but just to ensure quality throughout, I am actually going to add some overlays. Just see how they look, if they come through and look pixelated at all or look good. But there's the Audio Hotline logo. Let's add a little text there. I think it's good. It just says Audio Hotline everywhere. I'm just so self-absorbed. You <laughs> know? Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, there you go. A little countdown timer, even though I am literally currently live. But everything right here seems really good. Actually, my encoding is completely maxed out. And I still haven't dropped a single frame. I think that everything's going well. Now I have the Mayano PD100 plugged into the Zoom H5. And of course, one of the benefits of using a field recorder or an interface or a mixer is the fact that you have XLR capabilities. But here's the sound quality of the Mayano PD100 going into the Zoom H5. And now I have the Mayano PD100 plugged directly into the Yolo Box Pro's mic input. Now let me just say this isn't really a super fair test for the Yolo Box Pro. I have this microphone going from an XLR to 3.5 millimeter cable, but quite honestly, if you're planning on using a dynamic microphone like this going into the Yolo Box Pro, I just don't think you're going to get a very good result at all. Let me just note that this is not 
an ideal situation for the Yellow Box Pro. And if this kind of setup is what you are aiming for, I would say getting some sort of field recorder or interface is definitely a good idea. You could always use a line out or output option to go into the Yellow Box Pro from that device. But I am curious just how far we can push the Yellow Box Pro when it comes to audio. Now this is just a real quick side by side of the video quality that you can get out of the Yellow Box Pro. Right now you are looking at the Yellow Box Pro and now you are looking at the internal recording on the Sony a7 IV. I am currently recording the Sony in 1080p just so it's kind of a fair comparison. And I'll put these two side by side so you can see if there's any difference. But do keep in mind that the Yellow Box Pro is capped out at 1080p. Obviously, internally, I could go up to 4K, which would be substantially sharper. But I am curious if there's a big drop off in quality between the internal camera and the recording of the HDMI signal going into the Yellow Box Pro being recorded on that SD card. Well, now that I've went through and talked quite a bit about the Yellow Box Pro, now I'm going to give you my opinion on this device and just so you know during this end section I am in fact using the Yolo Box Pro to record this whole thing including the audio and I'll kind of run you through how I am recording this right now but I do just want to remind you I am in fact an audio channel just so you know audio hotline that's what it's called and maybe I do have a little bit of bias when it comes to audio quality with streaming, but I do think it is absolutely by far the most important part. I think that having good audio is more important than having good video. I think you can get by with pretty mediocre video as long as your audio is pretty damn solid. And with a device like this, there are absolutely challenges when it comes to audio. But I think the capabilities that it has and the quality that it can give you video and audio I've got to say I'm kind of surprised. Now I know this device can go anywhere from a thousand to like twelve hundred dollars and that's pretty steep for quite a few people but considering you're essentially getting a live streaming computer, a video switcher and recorder and essentially the software that you would need to pay for like Ecamm Live where you can put overlays on it, you're getting this amazing all-in-one package that if you were to purchase everything outright it would definitely be more money than a thousand dollars. Sure, there are some things that I wish could be a little bit different. Now I've kind of hinted how I feel about this a little bit, but let's go through some pros and cons and really dive into what I like about this, what I don't, and some other things that I've kind of found out about it. Now one thing that I did mention in my software run through is that that type USB-C actually was making an interface show up and said USB audio and that it wasn't currently available, but it made me think that it was eventually going to be available. And that's one thing I will give props to with YOLO Live is they are amazing about coming out with firmware updates. And I really have a good feeling about this next one. I think that it's going to maybe include what I'm talking about. So I'm going to point this camera toward the screen real quick and show you something. As you can see right here, this says USB audio. That's actually how I'm recording right now. Yeah. So I found when you don't plug in the interface to the USB-C port, but you actually plug it into the USB-A port, that it will also show up as a USB audio device, and it actually works. You can turn it on. There are a few things that are still a little finicky with it, though. Currently, I am recording with the Zoom AMS24. I actually do have this plugged directly into the Yolo Box Pro through the USB-A port, and it is working. However, when I plugged in other devices, whether it was the Focusrite Scarlett, the Behringer UMC22, the Motu M2, and the Evo 4, all of them had the same issue. And the issue was that it would only play to one headphone, which this can be a common problem when you plug an interface face into a computer, but there's ways to combat it and there's ways to fix it. On the Yolo Box Pro, they just haven't implemented those ways. You can't sum it down to a mono track or anything. So the reason the Zoom AMS24 works, it has this little streaming switch. You can switch it from music mode to streaming mode, and as soon as it went to streaming mode and I was testing this out, it worked perfectly. The other bummer is that the audio meter up on the top left of the Yellow Box Pro doesn't work when you're using USB audio right now, probably because USB audio isn't fully supported. But the fact that it's like somewhat supported and somewhat works gives me so much hope that one day you're just going to be able to plug a freaking interface into this thing. If and or when that happens, I'm like 
all in on this device if that happens, which right now I'm like honestly mostly in on. There's no way I'm not going to be using this for long form podcasts. There's no way I'm not going to use this for live streaming. I'm going to do it. I really think it is a great device. It's really fun to use. It's relatively effortless. You do have to learn a few things, but I mean, that's anything. I'm a pretty big fan of the auto switch video option. I think that's a cool feature. Now, the biggest bummer to me is this. I wish that you were able to use LUTs with this device. Right now, it tells you if you want to use like C-Log or S-Log or V-Log or whatever log you're using, that you should import the LUT into your camera and set it up there and then send the HDMI out. The process that I would use for podcasts and live streams is in Ecamm Live. I would just put my LUT in there and I would either use S-Log 3 or S Cinetone. And in Ecamm Live, they even have like an intensity slider for the LUT. If they added that into the Yolo Box Pro and that you could change the LUT per HDMI, since I do have different brands, I would just like melt with happiness. Audio interfaces and LUTs, if you could get those added in, oh, so sick. And honestly, those are very specific to my workflow. But being able to plug in a USB microphone or a USB audio interface to this and just have it function properly would be amazing. I think if the USB-A and USB-C ports were USB microphone compatible, that would be a big selling point for a lot of gamers and streamers. But I am here to tell you that right now I am using USB audio and it is working. You can hear it. But if they worked out the kinks, made it a little bit more compatible, I think that'd be great. But I think for the average YouTuber and streamer, this already works flawlessly. They already have a great device on their hands. And honestly, a lot of people are gonna use microphones like this that either don't need power or are powered by themselves or powered by the 3.5 millimeter mic jack on their camera. In that case, just still try to get this microphone close to your mouth, please. Boom it overhead or something. Don't put it on top of your camera. Do better than that. Get better audio than that for me. And I do guess that there are quite a few people out there that use like the wireless lav setups. That's also another amazing setup for the Yellow Box Pro. I will say the other issue that I do have with this is that the headphone jack on here has a massive amount of latency. I mean, you can use it to check if all the levels are okay and everything, but monitoring yourself the whole time, that's a no-go. I even like started talking in slow motion because I was trying to stay back with the latency. It doesn't work like that, but I, I was attempting it. I don't know why my brain did that, but it did. But for a lot of people that probably check it at the beginning of a stream and then take their headphones off, you're good to go. But for people that do want to monitor their audio the whole time, guess what? If they get USB microphones and USB interfaces completely compatible with this device, you're good to go. You can just freaking monitor it from your interface or your USB mic. Latency free monitoring, baby. Latency free. But even though I have mentioned a few things that I wish were different, everything else I really do like. The look of the monitor itself is really nice. I have noticed that it does seem to run a little bit more like blue than the screen on my cameras, my Atomos and my computer. So that is just something to keep in mind and just test out and see how you can adjust for that. Well, I almost made it through a whole review section without having to jump in and mention something else, but I didn't quite make it obviously because I'm talking to you right now. So this is Future Bronson here. I just wanted to mention a couple things, especially related to audio when it comes to the Yellow Box Pro. But there is a friend of mine that's dying to say hi to you. There was no kitty per test in this video, so he's struggling. He wants to say what's up. All right, Blue, say hi. There we go. He seems happier now. We're good. Big fan of the RE320. When I was listening back to this video and doing kind of my final sweep of it, obviously I had already noticed that when I plugged in the Dynamic Mayano microphone that the sound was not good. But what I didn't notice is that the mic plug on the Yolo Box Pro in general kind of struggles. I was listening back to the video comparison part where I did have the Deity D4 plugged in, and I noticed that the Yolo Box Pro was still doing that like kind of crackly noise gate sounding thing. I don't even know what to call it. So I went back and I did some more tests with some more microphones, made sure it wasn't just some weird thing. And in fact, it happened with all of them. And that's a pretty big bummer for the way that I would use the Yolo Box Pro. It's really not a deal breaker for me. However, it could be a deal breaker for some people. One thing that I've said on this channel quite a bit is that most camera preamps are garbage. So I usually encourage people to get a microphone that has a gain knob that can drive itself a little bit. But in this case, it almost seems like using the 3.5 millimeter jack on your camera is a better option than the Yellow Box Pro. 
but the fact that the preamp in the camera that I usually say isn't good is a better option than the preamp 3.5 millimeter mic jack on the Yolo Box Pro, that sucks. And the other thing I do want to mention right now is that I'm actually using the Zoom P4. So you can basically use any audio interface that can just sum the tracks to a stereo or mono. So most field recorders and things like that will work perfectly with the Yolo Box Pro already. And actually with the P4, even the audio meter is working perfectly right now. But I did realize one thing you have to do to make audio interfaces actually work with this. You need to go in and turn off any of the audio from your HDMIs. If any of those are on, it will just send you the notification that the USB-A and USB-C aren't compatible with devices like this yet. And maybe it will become fully compatible in the future, but if you have like a Zoom or Tascam product or some sort of field recorder like a Mix Pre or whatever, you could totally use it right now with the Yellow Box Pro. But connecting a Zoom product or something like that is definitely your best bet. The next best option is using an audio interface, a mixer, a field recorder, and sending a line out or the stereo outs into the line in of the Yellow Box Pro. The third best option is plugging a microphone into the preamp on your camera and sending it through HDMI. The fourth option, in my opinion, isn't an option. I personally would not use the microphone jack on the Yolo Box Pro. And maybe this is something that is fixable in firmware. I kind of feel like it's a hardware issue, but who knows, maybe there's some sort of software limitation that's really messing up that mic jack. So I just wanted to jump back in here, tell you those few options, tell you those few notes. And in fact, these few things have shaped my rating of the Yolo Box Pro a little bit. So the BBSAR rating that I initially gave actually isn't relevant anymore. So the BBSAR is actually an audio rating that Bark and I from Obscure Mics made, but it can pretty much apply to anything, so I'm going to apply it here. But here's the BB Star graphic up on the screen right now, and the rating that I give the Yolo Box Pro is an 8. Even though there are a few challenges, a few finicky things when it comes to audio with the Yolo Box Pro, I still think this is a firmware update or two away from being an absolutely amazing option when it comes to live streaming and having great audio. I mean, even for a majority of this video, the audio was fantastic. I had a device that was plugged into it or I went line in. So it's not like you don't have some good options you do. The best options do require another device, which is a little bit of a bummer. But with all the features and software that this packs in for video and overlays and everything, this is still an absolutely good deal. And I gotta say that I do recommend it. I just think that you need to, you know, figure out a solution for the audio that's gonna work for you. But I'm gonna let the historical Bronson finish the video. I want to say a thank you to everyone that's watching, a big thank you to everyone that subscribes, and the biggest thank you to all the Audio Hotline members out there. Look at all those damn gorgeous names up there. Plastic surgeons couldn't even make something more beautiful if they all clumped together and tried. Couldn't do it. If you want to be a hot little dime like these people up here, go ahead and press join down below. But hopefully this review of the Yolo Box Pro helped you out, helped you decide whether you want to get one of these or not. But most of all, I hope you had fun. And I'll see all of you audio and video nerds next time.